picture this, okay. Um, you're on the sunny hillside, Brazil, 1966. You see two men just lying there dressed in suits and raincoats. In suits and raincoats. Yeah, but here's the thing. They're wearing these lead masks. Lead masks? What? It sounds like a movie, right? <laughs> but this is a true story. Manuel Pereira da Cruz and Miguel Jose Viana found dead on Vintem Hill in Niteroi. Wow. And their deaths. <sighs> totally a mystery for decades. So today we're going to take this deep dive into all the evidence, the theories, try to figure out what happened on that hillside. This sounds wild. All right, let's hear it. Okay, so start with what we know. Cruz and Viana, they were electronics technicians, good friends, and both super into uh, spiritualism. Spiritualism, like... Uh, seances and that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. They lived in Campos dos Coitacazes, but then on August 17, 1966, they told their friends, hey, heading to Sao Paulo, got to buy some electronics, maybe a used car. They even had a friend drop them at the bus station, and they had a lot of cash on them, like 2.3 million cruzeros. 2.3 million cruzeros. That's, that's a serious chunk of change, especially back then. Oh, yeah. Definitely enough to raise some eyebrows, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, what were they really up to? And that question, what happened to all that cash... It becomes a key part of this whole puzzle. Okay, so they told everyone Sao Paulo, right? Right. But instead of getting tickets to Sao Paulo, they bought tickets for Niteroi. Wait, hold on. So they lied about where they were going? Looks like it. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if they were trying to hide their real destination. Huh. That's definitely suspicious. Were they intentionally misleading people? Or did something happen? Like a sudden change of plans? Yeah, it's one of those things that just makes this whole case even more mysterious. But anyway, so they get to Niteroi. They go to this electronic store they knew, and then get this, they buy raincoats huh. on a sunny day. Raincoats? Why? Exactly. It's bizarre. <laughs> then they stop for a drink at this bar. Witnesses there said they seemed anxious, kept checking their watches like they were waiting for something or someone. Okay, so something's definitely off here. They're acting strange. They're lying about their plans. And then, this is where things get even weirder. The last time anyone saw them alive, it was near Vintam Hill with some unidentified men in a jeep. Three days later, their bodies are found. And that's where those lead masks come in. Yep. The scene where they found the bodies, it's its crucial to this whole thing. It yeah. wasn't just some random spot. They were lying on the hillside, carefully positioned, dressed in those suits and raincoats, those lead masks covering their faces. Okay, this is getting creepier by the minute. So it was like stage like someone deliberately put them there that's what it looks like and to make it even more bizarre they weren't just lying on the ground they were on top of these leaves that had been cut with something sharp like yeah. someone went there ahead of time and like prepped the whole scene wow okay so i've got a stage scene two dead guys in lead masks what else did they find so alongside the bodies investigators find a few things an empty water bottle a couple of wet towels and uh this is where it gets really strange a notebook full of these cryptic notes. Cryptic notes? What kind of notes? Some were just calculations, you know, yeah. electronic stuff. But then there were these instructions about taking capsules at specific times. And then there's this weird note. Protect metals. Oh. And the most unsettling of all, a weight signal mask. A weight signal mask. Okay, that's just chilling. And those instructions, the language, did it sound like something Cruz and Viana would write? You know what? It didn't. People who knew them said it just didn't sound like them at all. It's almost like they were following instructions from someone else. Like they were being controlled or something. And that phrase, protect metals, could it be referring to those lead masks? Were they trying to shield themselves from something? It's like they were getting ready for something dangerous. And remember all that money they had, the 2.3 million cruzeros. Well, they only found 160,000 on their bodies. So a huge chunk of it is just yeah. gone. Yep, vanished. At first, the police thought, okay, simple robbery gone wrong. But if that's the case, why leave their watches, other valuables? And why all this weird staging with the masks and the positioning of the bodies? Yeah, a regular robbery doesn't explain all that. Exactly. It's like there's a whole other layer to this story, something way more complex and maybe even, I don't know, sinister. Definitely more to it than meets the eye. Okay, so if it wasn't a robbery, what are we thinking? What else could have happened? Well, there are a bunch of theories out there. One that always gets people talking is the UFO theory. A woman and her kids said they saw this strange object hovering over Vintem Hill the same night the guys disappeared. A UFO? Seriously? Yeah, so maybe Cruz and Viana were abducted by aliens. Maybe those lead masks were connected to alien technology somehow. Who knows? Okay, alien abductions, always a good story. But 
Is there any real evidence to back that up? Not really. It's all based on that one witness account and what she saw could have been anything, really, you know. A weather balloon, the plane, yeah. maybe just a weird cloud formation. Right, right. So probably not aliens, but something definitely happened to those guys. For sure. And this is where their interest in spiritualism becomes a big deal. Police found all these books about the occult in Viana's room, and some parts, especially the stuff about lead masks, were, like, highlighted. Could they have been involved in some sort of ritual that went wrong? Hmm, ritual gone wrong. That's interesting. But to really get that, we got to understand the context. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in the 1960s, Brazil was in the middle of this huge spiritualist movement. Groups like the Rational Spiritualist Society were super popular. Even scientists, intellectuals, they were getting into it. So it wasn't just some fringe thing, like a few weirdos in the woods. No, not at all. It was a major part of Brazilian culture. This wasn't just about, you know, talking to ghosts or reading tarot cards. It was deeper than that. It was all about exploring consciousness, the nature of reality, the idea of other dimensions and stuff like that. Okay, some pretty heady stuff. Yeah. And this is where those lead masks kind of start to fit in. Could they have been part of some experiment, like trying to block out sensory input so they could enhance their psychic abilities? Sensory deprivation? Yeah, that's a real thing. People have used it for centuries to alter their consciousness. Blocking out light and sound, creating a sensory deprivation environment. Those masks could have been a way to do that. And remember those capsules, the ones mentioned in the notebook. Some of these spiritualist groups, they were experimenting with all sorts of stuff, herbal concoctions, maybe even like early versions of psychedelics, all to kind of shift their perception, you know, connect with the spirit world. So Cruz and Viana, they were trying to create their own like DIY, I don't know, consciousness altering experience mm -hmm. sensory deprivation plus maybe some kind of drug yeah that's definitely a possibility and if they were really trying to contact spirits access other dimensions well who knows what they might have run into or what they thought they ran into makes you wonder what was going on in their heads yeah but this whole spiritualism thing it connects to another case and it's got some really strange similarities the death of hermes louise futosa back in 1962 Fatal. yeah he was an electronics technician too totally into psychic stuff and guess what they found him dead with a lead mask near his body. Another lead mask. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? Two cases, four years apart, both electronics technicians, lead masks, and a fascination with all things paranormal. Okay, that can't be a coincidence. There has to be some kind of connection. Maybe they knew each other or they got their ideas from the same place. Because that's what everyone thought. The police even reopened Futosa's case after Cruz and Viana died, hoping to find some link. But nothing. No evidence they even knew each other or belonged to any of the same groups. So, two isolated incidents, but with these crazy parallels, what was Fatosa doing with that mask? Well, from what people who knew him said, and from his writing, it seems like he believed he could uh, pick up radio and TV signals with his mind. With his mind? Yeah, like a human radio receiver. And he thought the lead mask would block out interference. He was trying to build a radio out of his brain. That's, mm. I mean, that's pretty ambitious and kind of out there. A little bit, yeah. But think about it, this was the 60s. Parapsychology was a big deal. People were experimenting with the powers of the mind, you know. A lot of it wasn't very scientific, but still. It's amazing how what we think is possible changes over time. Right. But back to the masks for a second. Why lead? What's so special about lead? Well, lead's a dense metal. It's really good at blocking radiation, which is why they use it for x-rays and stuff like that. So if you're experimenting with psychic energies or whatever, lead would make sense as a way to protect yourself. So they weren't just picking random stuff. They were using what they knew about science, even if it was kind of basic, to try to achieve something. Exactly. And that's what makes these cases so interesting, this mix of scientific ideas with this uh, intense belief in the paranormal, this drive to explore the unknown. Trying to connect the dots between the real world and the supernatural. But it's not just the masks themselves, it's the whole ritualistic vibe of it all. The suits, the raincoats, those bodies laid out so carefully, the cryptic notes. Mm. It's like they were planning something. It was definitely deliberate. And that brings us back to the strongest theory in Cruz and Viana's case. They were doing some kind of spiritual experiment. Their interest in the occult, the masks, those notes about taking capsules, waiting for a signal. It points to something more than just, you know, casual curiosity about spiritualism. So what kind of experiment are we talking about here? How do the masks and the capsules fit in? Well, we have to kind of guess here. But we can look at what other spiritualist groups were doing back then. 
Some believe that sensory deprivation could really boost your psychic abilities, make it easier to sense the spirit world, so the masks. Maybe their way of creating sensory deprivation. Like a DIY sensory deprivation tank. Exactly. Picture yourself in total darkness, total silence, yeah. no input from your senses. Your mind would start to, you know, drift, create its own reality. Yeah, I can see how that could lead to some pretty wild experiences. Yeah. Especially if you already believe in spirits in other dimensions. Right. And then there's those capsules they mentioned in the notes. Those could be anything. Herbal mixtures that supposedly boost psychic powers, or maybe early forms of psychedelics. Some groups were using those to change their state of consciousness, make it easier to connect with the spirit world. So they were trying to, like, hack their own brains. Hmm. Sensory deprivation, plus maybe some kind of drug, to open a door to another reality. But if that's what happened, what went wrong? Did they... I don't know, did they see something they couldn't handle? That's the big question, right? Did they contact something beyond our understanding, something that just overwhelmed them? Or did the experiment do something to their brains, cause some kind of fatal reaction, or was it just an accident, a mistake that ended up killing them? It's scary to think they might have stumbled onto something too big for them, something that cost them their lives. Yeah. But there's that line from the notebook, a weight signal mask. What if that signal wasn't like, some mystical message from the spirit world. What if it was something real, something you could detect with the right equipment? That's when things get really interesting. Remember, Cruz and Viana, electronics experts, they understood radio waves, frequencies, all that stuff. Maybe they were tuned into something most people wouldn't even know existed. Like a secret frequency, a radio station no one else could hear, a station broadcasting from, I don't know, somewhere beyond our normal reality. It's almost like they were listening in on something they shouldn't have, a message that was never meant for them. And in the end, it cost them their lives. It's a chilling thought, but if they were drawn to that hilltop by a signal, then what happened next? what they find there? Did the signal itself kill them, or was there something else waiting for them on that hill? We might never know the answer to that. The lead masks of Nidoroi, still a total enigma, a puzzle with missing pieces, a story that just it keeps drawing us in, even after all these years. It's true. We're left with these two guys, experts in electronics, obsessed with the paranormal, and they might have been led to their deaths by a signal, infrasound, radio waves, something else entirely. We just don't know. They put on those masks, maybe for a ritual, maybe for a protection from who knows what, and then something happened. Something we may never fully understand. It's a reminder that there's still so much we don't know about the world. Even with all our technology and science, there are forces at play that we may never fully grasp. And maybe that's okay. Maybe some mysteries are better left unsolved, right? I think so. But even without all the answers, these cases make us think outside the box. They remind us that there's more to reality than we see. The world is a stranger and more wondrous place than we often realize. A place where science and the supernatural, sometimes, I don't know, they kind of collide. Where the line between what's real and what's not, maybe that line isn't so clear after all. So what do you think? Were Cruz and Viana victims of some crazy experiment? Explorers who went too far? Or something else completely? We'll probably never know for sure. But one thing's certain, the lead masks of Nidoroi. They remind us that the world is full of mysteries. And that even in an age of technology and science, there are still things out there that defy explanation. Absolutely. And that's it for this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep looking for those hidden truths, no matter how strange they might seem.